Okay, okay. Well, would you like to explain to the audience? Just introduce yourself. I've told them how wonderful and great you are, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my name again, my name is Edison Agbanji. I run a company called Ancestral Essence. Uh, we've been going for about 10 years and we've been looking into ways you communicate with your ancestors and basically get them to teach you about the other side of life the spirit world and the world inside your mind and connection to people that have deceased, people that have passed and how you basically maintain the relationship and how you have them in your corner, giving you wisdom and guidance through your life. So, okay. Yes, in a nutshell. Wow. Okay. Well, this is quite an alternative thought, isn't it? To, I think most of us growing up, were sort of told that you know if you when you die you can either go to heaven or hell and milk and honey or nothing happens at all so you're kind of indicating that there is a follow-on after death so could you explain <laughs> what death is well death really is the transition of state where you no longer participate in reality via your body you basically participate as your consciousness again so you are really just, how do you say, um, you're here living your life through your body, but you're the consciousness that's actually looking through the body and experiencing the body, and, but it's not actually the body. That which you can experience, you're not actually that. That which you can observe is not actually you. You are separate from the experience, which means that you're something greater or something um, you're not the actual event. You're not the body taking place. So death per se is just the ending of a story in the body that you're in. But your consciousness came from somewhere and your consciousness is going somewhere. So therefore the journey doesn't end for you. It just ends in this body story suit. Okay. All right. So would you say then that death is necessary because we're going somewhere else? hundred percent. People like yourself are necessary because you have um, birth doulas that bring the child into this world, but you also require death doulas that when the consciousness is about to leave the body, you can guide it to the ancestral realm where the family actually is. So that is equally as important as bringing the child in. The same way a child comes into this world, his, his parents, which are his ancestors, are waiting for him. Wow. Okay. So there's a huge welcome then. Thank you. And okay. when you transition, exactly the same thing. Okay. So... When somebody passes away then, um, are we supposed to sort of, how do we see that then? Is that like an upgrade? Is it? Is it? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yes, because you've let go of the trappings of your mind and the trappings of your story and your sense of success or failure that comes with the body idea story. Wow. Yeah, because nothing can happen to you. I can't harm you. I can't hurt you because you're the consciousness having the experience. It's your body that feels pain. Okay. All right. It's a shame we don't have longer to discuss this. <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just couldn't get in. And uh, oh, I'm on Zoom all the time, but I just could not get in for the life of me. But yes. Okay. All right. So the is fine. Don't worry. Not a problem. So the body is different to the soul and the spirit that is 100%. within the body. 100%. The soul is the database. The soul is the place where the collection of all your journeys to this world actually exists. So you can access your soul and understand your relationship to people around you, your environment and everything, because essentially your soul holds all the reasons why you're connected to this person, married to that person, been in a relationship. Your whole storyline of what you're going to do whilst you're in this life is contained in the soul, oh, how do I say, database or 
the file that was sent to you was sent with you when you came to this life so that all the different things in your life would be there written for you at certain times certain intervals certain alignments to meet with certain people to be in certain situations and um, basically to have certain experiences take place with you okay so and if that's the case uh -huh. is is there really such a thing as an early or an accidental death via murder or? Yes, 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 there is. Um, because uh, your own soul um, or your counsel can take you out. If you're living a life where the mission that you came here to do, you don't seem to have any intention of fulfilling that, no intention of creating or doing what you meant to do. Your own soul self can take you out. Okay. Or you can be in a situation where you have decided that you want to leave at somebody else's hand. Yeah, because okay. a person you owe a previous debt or you may have killed them in a previous incarnation. So you agree to that exchange in this life or based on your actions and your deeds or certain people that you're around, certain energies can manipulate the reality that you're now going to face and put you in danger of such situations as death or being harmed. Wow. OK, this is deep. This is deep. So everything really, I think then what you're saying is that everything is kind of done on an agreement. Everything. Okay. You agreed before you came here. You just forgot your contract when you arrived or not when you arrived. As you became educated, you lost the capacity to be able to access your memories of why you came here and what you came here to do. Okay. Okay, all right. And so fast forwarding, going back to what you just said about, um, you know, connecting with your ancestors after death. Um, you were saying that, you know, people like me help people to kind of cross that bridge so that they That's can right. find themselves with their ancestors. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that they can find themselves anywhere else, accidentally, somewhere else? Or is it just a given? A much, a much bigger story. <laughs> that if I went into that, that would be crazy. But yes, not all ancestors are good. Okay. But even that, that's your destination. You want the right ancestors to turn up and take you to where you need to go. Okay. Yeah. Right. And do they come via invitation or do they sort of know beforehand, all right, I'm going to be the one that greets you? Yes, about normally a month before people start exhibiting behaviors where they said, oh, I saw this person the other day and I saw that person the other day. And everyone knows that person had passed a long time ago. So be about a month, three weeks or what have you, they will start to visit the person and start giving them indications that your time's coming. We're going to basically be bringing you to us where we are in our dimension. People think that their family member has gone crazy. The family member hasn't gone crazy. They've now just been told. And they've been having conversations with people that what you think have transitioned by our story of the world, but they haven't. They just operate in different dimensions. And they're basically coming to um, prepare you for the journey that you're going to take. Okay. And I think that... I'm not sure whether it's a cultural thing, but I'm aware of that time being referred to as traveling. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, where our mind is is traveling, we're having these conversations with those that have gone before us, and so they are preparing us for that time. Okay. 100%. Where they're going to take you, and then when you're over there, they're going to help you with the way of the land over there. So this right. is why you normally stay with one of your grandparents or your mother or your father. And then they take you through the steps of living over there and what that entails. Okay. Okay. Wow. This, I think, is um, new information for a lot of people. And I believe that at times we've been really led away from the thought of interacting with our ancestors. Um. Would you yeah. say that this is our um, 
ancient, authentic truth? Well, this is where it becomes slightly, um, how do you put it? It's almost like you've been doing it all your life, but it was called something else. So you've always been interacting with your ancestors. You've never not interacted with your ancestors. Before you even open your mouth, you've had a discussion in your brain as to what you're going to say. Okay. What am I going to say next? How am I going to? And who are you discussing that with? Okay. Who are you having your internal discussions with before you open your mouth? Who are the people that you're asking within yourself who have got a better understanding of the subject than you? Who is that person that turns up every now and again and say, don't do this, don't do that. And you then claim that I ignored myself. Yeah. yeah. I heard that and I didn't listen. Yeah. I knew I shouldn't have done it. I you heard it. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Okay. Something told me. And that's who they are. And that's who they've always been there with you doing those things. It's just, yeah. Okay. That's something else. So do we then identify them, I suppose, as our intuition? You do as your intuition. And then it can be random, as in now and again.